Hi, this is Frank Demora. This is going to be a very short segment, but I wanted to give another aspect of what I've been warning about, about the coming war uh, against Israel, and of course that would be the Psalm 83 war. And we know that President Ahmadinejad from Iran has been causing tensions with the bordering nations around Israel in the hopes that his allies, these satellite nations, for example, the Palestinians, the Hezbollah, the Hamas, Lebanon, Egypt, and Syria, and Jordan and Saudi Arabia, all those that are mentioned in the Psalm 83 war, he is hoping, that would be President Ahmadinejad, that they would be instrumental in going after and trying to wipe out Israel. Now there was a news broadcast that was brought to my attention and it's, it runs parallel to what I warned a few days ago but I wanted you to get another aspect of the news so here it is. From the headquarters of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews in Jerusalem this is Israel in the News, I'm Bob Sauer. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad igniting new tensions with Israel after joining demonstrators in the streets chanting, Down with the U.S. and Israel. Meanwhile, Israel preparing for a possible war with Iran. Sky News reporter Emma Heard is in Jerusalem. Getting ready for a war that might yet not happen. Distributing free gas masks, preparing the people for the consequences of a possible strike against Iran. Some believe it's inevitable now, but there still seems to be confusion and concern rather than panic. Well, I'm doing this because my wife wanted me to come and get them. I personally don't think we need them. Benjamin Netanyahu has moved from hinting at military action to openly threatening it. And Israel's Prime Minister now says he He's prepared to act unilaterally. Israel's case is that sanctions and diplomacy have failed to halt Iran's nuclear program. The Iranian regime is still in open defiance and getting perilously close, Israel claims, to posing a threat to the very existence of... Now before we go on, just let me warn you and just bring you up to date. If you've been following my website and uh, my uh, prophecy updates, those have, who have been following know that five years ago I told you that nothing was going to come from the UN as far as getting Ahmadinejad to stop working for a nuclear bomb that no doubt that they would use against Israel. And now we've come five years later and the president or the prime minister of Israel is saying the same thing that I've been warning that nothing is going to happen to stop the Iranians from trying to get a hold of that bomb and so he's going to have to do something. Let me continue. The Jewish state. The violence in Aleppo, Syria shows no signs of letting up as government troops and rebel forces continue to battle it out for control. The northern city of Aleppo burns as President Assad's forces continue to bombard Syria's second largest city. It's now one month on from the outbreak of what the regime called the mother of all battles. And yet the fighting shows no signs of abating. The Free Syrian Army says it now controls almost two-thirds of Aleppo. But government officials in the capital, Damascus, say the reports are completely false. Now, if you are new to Bible prophecy, you need to understand what Isaiah 17.1 says and also what the prophet Isaiah says in chapter 49, verses 24 through 27, and that is that Syria was going to be destroyed. We know that Damascus is going to be left in ruinous heap. That's what the prophet tells us. So when you hear the news about Syria, you'll understand now why it's really important and why I keep bringing this kind of news up because it's leading and heading towards the Psalm 83 war of which Syria is going to be one of the participants coming against Israel. Guy News correspondent Samantha Gregson. The Syrian regime is coming down on comments President Obama made about deploying U.S. troops if the Assad regime used chemical weapons. Steve Harrigan is along the Syria-Turkey border. The Russians warning the U.S. not to act unilaterally. Syrian officials also warning the U.S. that intervening inside the conflict in Syria would be impossible. They say such an intervention would make a much wider war beyond the borders of Syria. Now, when you go to my website and you do a Google on Frank DeMora and you put down uh, if something to this effect, Frank DeMora warns Syria will attack 
Israel if outside forces attack Syria because Bashar al-Assad has promised that that's exactly what he was going to do and I said this before but I'll say it again for the new people if you get an animal and you corner that animal that animal will do things that he would normally not do to protect himself and in this case Bashar al-Assad already told us what he's going to do and when they're talking about conflicts outside the borders which he just mentioned and I'll pull this back a little bit so you can hear it again you know you'll, you'll actually know now what he is talking about when he's talking about these other borders because he's talking about Israel conflict in Syria would be impossible they say such an intervention would make a much wider war beyond the borders of Syria this is Israel in the news Israel is troubled by the entry of Egyptian tanks into northern Sinai without coordination with Israel, a violation of the 33-year-old peace treaty between the two countries. Now, again, Thessalonians, Paul tells us, the Apostle Paul said when they're calling peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. Israel had a peace agreement with is Egypt, 1979. That peace agreement has gone haywire now. And now that the Egyptians are moving the tanks in the area to Sinai, that's what they're talking about, a, a violation of the peace agreement. And why is this important? Because Egypt, like Syria, one of the nations that are becoming against Israel soon in that Psalm 83 war. And has asked Egypt to withdraw them, an Israeli government official said Tuesday. Much discussion in the press here in Israel that Egypt was violating its peace treaty with them after moving troops and tanks into the largely lawless Sinai Peninsula to root out Islamist militants who are setting up camp there. But an Egyptian military source says all troop movements were coordinated with the Israelis and discussions are underway on the subject of how to secure the area. Israel seeks to encourage Egypt's efforts to restore order in the increasingly chaotic Sinai Peninsula, but without posing a threat to its own security. U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta is offering Egypt a package of classified intelligence sharing capabilities designed to help it identify military threats in the Sinai Peninsula and reassure Israel that Egypt can deal with rising militancy along Israel's border. Now, again, just let me give you a heads up on this because since the Lord already showed us that Egypt was going to be attacking Israel, what are the chances of Egypt uh, coming to be friends with Israel again? Well, not much at all. And even if they did, we know that it would be a setup period, just like what happened with Japan and the United States when Japan was talking peace and all of a sudden Pearl Harbor was attacked. So you have to stand on the word of the Lord understand what he has said about Egypt, what he has said about Syria, and know that the outcome will be exactly as he says in Psalm 83. Jonathan Greenberg of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews provides our Israel in the News perspective. Next week, the 120 member countries of the non-aligned movement will meet in Tehran for their annual summit. The organization dates back to the Cold War era when countries largely third world dictatorships wanted to chart course neither pro-American nor pro-Soviet. The U.S. State Department has said that Iran is going to try to use this summit to advance its own agenda and obscure the fact that it's in violation of its own treaty obligations and multiple U.N. sanctions resolutions. Iran is under severe economic and diplomatic sanctions for pushing ahead with its nuclear weapons program, a plan that shows no sign of changing. Those sanctions didn't stop the non-aligned movement from meeting in Tehran, and it's not stopping U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon from attending the conference, where he says he will, quote, Use the opportunity to convey the clear concerns and expectations of the international community on the issues for which cooperation and progress are urgent for both regional stability and the welfare of the Iranian people, end quote. Mr. Ban's tepid comments are further indication of the weakness and moral rot inherent in the institutions of the international community. Mr. Ban should simply cancel his visit. This is Jonathan Greenberg. And so he's telling the truth. There is nothing that the UN is going to be able to do to stop Iran's quest from the nuclear, uh, their nuclear quest to use this bomb against Israel. So count on Israel having to do something to stop them. And this is why I'm asking everyone to please pay attention to what's going to go on in the Middle East because it's all going to start there in the Middle East. And I'm hoping this uh, will encourage you to 
read the scriptures to understand what's going on and to stay on the watch we have too many people that don't know what's going on and this is really dangerous thank you